2 Kings chapter 19, verse 20. Hezekiah is a good king of Judah. He's doing right. And when every time you do right, the enemy shows up. And Assyria has come. They have blasphemed God with the mouth. They have blessing God with a letter. Hezekiah has taken this letter from the Syrians. He's gone to the house of the Lord. He's got sackcloth on. He's praying. He spreads the letter out before the Lord and says, Lord, look at this. They're downrating you. And verse 20, we pick up with Jehovah's answer. And Israel, the son of, and Isaiah, the son of Amos, son of Hezekiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. No. The Lord God, Lord God Almighty of Israel, not of Syria. That which thou hast prayed to me against the Nacarib, king of Syria, I have heard. Now look previously, verse 16. Lord, bow thy ear and hear. O Lord, open thy eyes and see. Hear the words of Sennacherib. And in verse 20, God himself answers says, I've heard you. And we mentioned last night, you can't get that from a statue. You can't get that from a fallen God. We have, God, we have the God that has eyes to see and ears to hear. And the enemy is Sennacherib. This is the word that the Lord has spoken concerning him through Isaiah. The virgin daughter of Zion, this is how God is looking at the Jews, has despised thee and laughed thee to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem has shaken her head at thee. You know, who are you guys compared to our God? Whom hast thou reproached? That's the first time that word shows up. And early uh, reproach, it was reproved. It was first showed up. But he had reproached and blasphemy. So God has heard it. God has read it. And when the heathen, again, when you're in a public ministry and they come slamming you. And when Jesus came to Paul, he said, Paul, why persecutest thou me? Paul never persecuted Jesus. He persecuted Christians and Jesus took it personally. Now this Rabshika, who... Sennacherib sins. He is this foul mouth in God, foul mouth in the Jews, and God says, I heard that. And when people foolishly bad mouth God, they don't realize God is hearing it and recording. We have chapter 18 and chapter 19 of what the, what the king of Syria and Rabshika have said about God. It's been recorded by the Holy Spirit. Whom thou hast reproached and blasphemy, against whom thou hast exalted thy voice, pride, look how great we are. No nations could stand before us. And lifted up thy eyes on high, proud, pride. Pride never goes with God. Man, that's pride. That's Satan. Satan is the king of over the children of pride. Uh, I believe it's Daniel says, or Ezekiel. Even against the Holy One of Israel. So not only do we have the Lord God of Israel, but we have the, the Holy One, the one God, the only God of Israel. And that's God the Father, that's God Jehovah. You've angered the God of all gods. The God that is the God of your God, because remember, when it came to the Philistines having Dagon, God said to Dagon, you better fall down and bow before me, boy. Mr. Friday fish guy, get your butt down. And then the next day, what are you doing back up? <laughs> I didn't do I didn't down, boy, and, and lose your arms and your head. God is serious. All these saints, all these, these gods of the world, they will fall down before the Holy One. By thy messengers, thou hast reproached the Lord. Now God is addressing, verse 20, Sennacherib. By the messengers, that has been Rabshika. 
and the messengers that carry this letter and has said, now watch this. This is recorded by God to Isaiah. Isaiah would have known nothing. Hezekiah would have no knowledge. And what we're going to see now is Sennacherib's words that God's going to record for us what he said. Now, this is Sennacherib. Where he said it, how he said it, when he said it, we don't know. But God says, here we go. Thou hast said, with the multitude of my chariots, look at the pride, look at the numbers, I am come up to, to the height of the mountains. Look at, look at me, I'm higher than the mountains. To the sides of Lebanon, good country. And we'll cut down the tall cedars thereof. I'm going to go to Lebanon and I'm going to chop all those cedar trees down. My power. I'm going to build great and wonderful things. You remember the cedar wood was, was used for the temple. And then they had the thing to lay overlay it with gold. Those cedar trees were, re resembled strength and power and great building. And the choice fir trees thereof, the best wood. So now I get the best wood, the strong wood. And I will enter into the lodgings, that's the only time that word shows up, of his borders. That would be Jerusalem, Israel, Judah. And into the forest of his Carmel, that's Judah. Jesus would be on Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel is where uh, Elijah had the battle with the false prophets of Baal. I have digged and drunk strange waters. I've been to different reservoirs, different wells, wells that are not mine. I've drank of the water of the war of the lands. And with the sole of my feet, my feet, Sennacherib, I have dried up all the rivers of besieged places. I have stopped the river so these cities that I besiege can't get water, can't get food. I changed the, the river courses. I, not God, I have changed the courses of rivers. That's how Babylon fell, you know. When the army came in, the Medes came in, they rerouted the, the, I forget what river there was now. Oh, well, with the river, the river ran right through the middle of Babylon. They changed the route of that river so it lowered itself. And that lowering itself, they were able to go under the walls of that city. So it, it was a tactic back then. They had those powers. Listen, people think that the people in this time were stupid, ignorant, because they didn't have the great luxury of caterpillar uh, construction vehicles. They got work done. Look at the pyramids. You couldn't design a pyramid today. Has thou not heard long ago? How I have done it. Now, again, this is still so negative. You, you would think this is God. How long ago I've helped the Jews. I've done. No, this is so negative in his pride, in his boastings. And of ancient times that I have formed it. Oh, come on. You ain't that old, buddy. Man, he's going into a time even before him. So he's revelating himself as a God. As the pharaohs were. To be claimed as gods. Now have I brought it to pass that thou should be to lay waste fenced cities into ruinous heats. I'm going to destroy cities. Therefore, their habitations were of small power compared to me. They were dismayed and confounded. This first time that word shows up. They were as grass of the field. I just mowed them over. This ate them like a cow, a sheep. A goat, and as the green herb, as the grass of the housetops, that's what the coating of the rooftops were, they were grass, and as cold as corn blasted before it was grown up. I destroyed crops, I destroyed homes, I destroyed walled city. Look at me, look how great I am, look what I've done, look at me, look at my power. No one can fight against me. I am the greatest. It sounds like American. Now, this is God. God's going to speak now. But I know thy abode. I know where you live. You live down in a miserable, rotten place. I sit up here in heaven in glory. And thy going out 
and not coming in. I know where you are. I know where you're going. I know where you've been, God says. You can't hide from me. And I rage, watch this, against me. That'd be Paul. Paul said he was mad towards Christians. He killed them. He put them in prison. He handcuffed them. He bring them to the priest. He was terribly mad against those people that turned away from the Jewry. This guy is totally mad against God. How dare this one group of people stand before me? How dare they not give me money? How dare we do not go in there and destroy Jerusalem already? Because thy rage against me and thy tomo is come up unto me, as it come into my ears, God heard that. Hezekiah said, Lord God, open your ears to me. And he said, I've heard thee. I've also heard what we just read about Sennacherib. I've heard this big mouth. Therefore, I will put my hook. That's the first time that shows up. Hook. In thy nose. Man, when you got something in the nose of a person, and this was used throughout slavery. You ain't going to rip that thing out of your nose. And if you're you're chained to a, to a group of people in a line and you're all hooked by the nose, if you drag that out of your nose, you're going to get the person in front of you and the person behind you, maybe two others. He's got you. And my bridle, that's the first time that shows up. That's what you use for a horse and animals. That's where you guide them. Sennacherib's like, look at all the power I got. <coughs> Look how well I am. God says, I'm going to put in your hook, a hook in your nose. You're not going to be able to do anything with your faith. And I'm going to put a bridle on you. You ain't going to be able to go where you want to go. In thy lips. And I will turn thee back by the way by which thou camest. You're, going, you're, you're not staying in Jerusalem forever. You're leaving. And this shall be a sign unto thee. Now he's talking to Hezekiah again. He, now he's directing it. He was talking to Sennacherib, though he's not there, but talking to Sennacherib. Now he turns to Hezekiah in Israel and Judah and Isaiah. For Jews require a sign. Ye shall eat this year such things as grow of themselves. So you're going to have crops. You're going to have olives. You're going to have grapes, wheat, barley. And in the second year, next year, that which spring is up of the same. You're going to have more crops next year. And in the third year, sow ye and reap and plant vineyards and eat the fruits thereof. There's going to be no besiegement here as it was in Israel north. You're going to have crops. You're going to enjoy the crops. You're going to enjoy the food and the drink from those crops. That's a sign. Don't worry about Sennacher. Don't worry about the Syrians. And here's prophecy. And the remnant that is escaped out of the house of Judah shall yet again take root downward. That's the first time that word shows up. And bear fruit upward. You know, you put the seed in the ground, well, up comes. And Jesus said, unless a kernel of corn die and be buried, it, shall, it won't bring up fruit. So you can run that to Jesus. For out of Jerusalem, shall go forth a remnant. And they that escape out of Mount Zion, the zeal of the Lord of hosts, shall do this. So we got the Lord God of Israel, we got the Holy One of Israel, we got the Lord of hosts. That's the angels' host. Therefore thou thus saith the Lord, concerning the king of Assyria, back to Sennacherib, he shall not come into this city. I bet you Hezekiah went and heard that. Whew, thank you, Lord. Nor shoot an arrow there. There'll be no military. Nor come before it with shield. Nor cast a bank. You ain't coming in this city. You ain't coming to the walls of this city. God's going to protect Hezekiah. He didn't protect Israel in their sins and their wickedness. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return. He shall not come into this city, saith the Lord of hosts. For I will defend this city 
to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. So Sennacherib can do whatever he wants. He can make a neutron bomb. He can make a, a, a hydrogen bomb. He ain't going to attack Israel and he ain't going to win. God said, you're not doing it. And it came to pass that night, that night, that the angel of the Lord, that's Jesus Christ. That's one angel now. We're going to look at something in a minute here. That the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians. That's the first time that word shows up, Assyrians. A hundred, four score, and five thousand. So, score 80. A hundred and eighty five thousand warriors, a hundred and eighty five thousand men of war army has been killed by one angel. One angel, a hundred and eighty five thousand. Let's take Matthew twenty six fifty three. Matthew 2653. Scripture with scripture, we will see the power of angels. Matthew 26, verse 53. Okay, ready? This is Jesus speaking. Thinkest thou that thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father God and he shall presently give me more than 12 legion of angels one angel destroyed 185,000 Assyrians in Roman time a legion would be anywhere between 3,000 to 5,000 let's take the lower 3,000 26 thousand angels jesus said at a minimum i can call now i didn't add it up i didn't take the twenty six thousand. but can you imagine how many of those 12 legion of angels could have taken care of where one angel in second kings destroyed 180 that angel is jesus christ himself If Jesus Christ can call the Father and say, Father, send the angels down, this earth would have been wiped out. Thank God for the mercy and grace and the long suffering. So back in 2 Kings, 104 scoring 5,000. And when they, now, here, now here's a problem in the scripture, ready? Here's a big problem. And when they rose, when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. That's the first time corpses shows up in the Bible. What's the problem? Well, how can they wake up and see they're dead? It did not say they were all killed. It tells that 185,000, there were more than 185,000 soldiers there. And the ones that survived it, they got up and they went, come on, let's go. We're dead. They found 185,000 dead. And they, that's a problem verse for people. Or it could be when Hezekiah woke up. Yeah, it could have been when Hezekiah. When, that's another thing, too, a possibility. When the Jewish people go, oh, look at this. Or Sennacherib, because so Sennacherib, king of Assyria, he didn't die. Departed. He, I'm out of here. And went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. Hey, we know where Nineveh is. And it came to pass. As he was worshiping in the house of Natrach, that's a fallen god, his god, small g, that Adamalek and Shazer, his son, excuse me, his son smote him with the sword. Yeah, nice sons. And they escaped in the land of Armenia, and Ashadim. His son reigned in his stead. <clears throat> well, look at that. You imagine Sennacherib wakes up in hell and says, What? What happened? And one of the devils in hell walks up, Your own sons killed you, buddy. 
you destroyed and conquered as Alexander the Great. And you are in hell today because two of your sons. While you were worshiping you, what kind of God is that? Small G O D. Uh, uh, um, Sennacherib? This is Nushrock. Turn around. Where was the thunder? Where was the lightning? Some God couldn't protect his worshiper. And God the Father has protected Hezekiah in the land. Judah was not attacked by, by Sennacherib. God protected it. And we'll pick up next time. Hezekiah even more.